Today, I'm going to take you behind the scenes on how we shot this epic running commercial in only one day. Why run? Why do this to yourself? Why push yourself until your muscles give up and you can't breathe? I used to ask the same questions back then. I hated running. But the more I did it, the more I understood the reasons behind it. When you're running, it's you against you. No players, no competitors, no enemies. It's you against your own body and your mind. Foot after foot, breath after breath. You push yourself to go further, go faster. You can feel your body sweating and your heart pumping. Suddenly everything around you starts to slow down and you enter a state of calmness. You feel the wind blowing along your face and you watch your legs move on autopilot. You're still pacing like an animal, but you can't feel it. It's just you in your tunnel. No distractions, no stress. It can almost feel like meditation until you flip back into reality. Mile after mile you push yourself to not give up. Your muscles get weak, your feet start hurting and you're covered in pain. Your body is telling you to stop. But you still keep going. Running is the essence of ambition. Always fighting, always pushing, always improving. It's about embracing the discomfort and breaking your mental barriers. Running taught me the most important lesson in life. It taught me that we are aware of only a fraction of the things we are capable of and that our limitations only exist in our minds. So for a commercial, it is very important to already have an exact outline of the story and the shots you need before starting with the shoot. That's why I wrote a short script for the voiceover in Notion and then I defined the different shots that I needed to capture in order to make the video work. A shot list like this really helps you stay organized during the shoot and saves you a lot of time as you know exactly what to capture. When I was done with the shot list, I thought about locations which could match the vibe of the different scenes and created a film schedule with specific timings. Especially with more people, it is absolutely necessary that everybody is on the same page and knows what the shooting day is going to look like. We had a total of five different locations and only one day to pull it all off as I was about to leave to South Africa and all of us already had other projects for the days ahead. So the schedule was very tight. As I would be the actor in the commercial itself, I asked three of my friends to help me shoot this piece. Julian, who was the DOP and filmed all of the shots, Andy, who drove the camera cars and assisted with lighting, and Patrizio, who captured all of the behind the scenes shots. So now that the crew was assembled, we were ready to start with the first location. <laughs> so, as you see, we're just completely redesigning <laughs> my apartment here. For the first scene, the first one is going to be where there's just like a couple of different shots where I'm standing in front of the mirror because we really want to portray kind of like inner battle when it comes to running, like you versus you, me in the mirror versus me in front of the mirror. We're just trying to figure out a nice lighting setup. Kind of difficult in a small apartment like this, but I think it's coming together. It's basically a pretty, pretty old red. <laughs> pretty old red, yeah. yeah. And so basically, yeah, matte box for filters, microphone. That's a Teradex system, which is like basically a video transmission system. What do you actually have it for? Is this one not connected to the camera Yes, itself? yes, yes, okay. it is, but I have a separate screen. So you oh, can okay. So you watch yourself. So we can even, we even can improve the shots. We can okay, show that all right. Later. Yeah, but uh, just right. a camera, a little bit bigger, nothing too special. Nothing too special, yeah. yeah. Not just a basic red setup. <laughs> So after finally figuring out the lighting setup, we started shooting. The most important shot here was me going towards the mirror and looking myself in the eyes. This shot required a couple of tries as the movement of me and the camera needed to match perfectly. We reviewed the first shots and found out that it was quite difficult to find a nice framing while still not seeing the camera in the mirror. So we detached the matte box and within a few tries we were able to nail the shot while hiding the camera behind my arm. We captured some different angles on various focal lengths and even got some macro shots of my eye to have some more opportunities when it comes to the editing. The additional monitor actually allowed Julian and me to closely work together on framing the shots and in general both of us constantly talked to each other on how we can perfectly transport the feeling of that scene. 
So what we're trying to do right now is kind of like an effect where I'm just standing in front of the mirror, I'm leaving the frame, and I myself am a natural transition so that my mirror image is still standing there. So that's why we just set up the red on the tripod right now and it has to like stand completely still. And then we just have like one clean slate of me just standing in front of the mirror and then one moving out and I'm just going to mask myself out so that there's only my mirror image. <laughs> I hope this works. <laughs> The difficult thing about this shot was to keep the camera completely still as it was standing on my soft bed. In the first tries, I sometimes touched the bed which made us redo the shots and the second challenge were my acting skills. <laughs> acting is freaking hard, honestly. Again. <laughs> Eventually, after a few more tries, I got everything right and when masking myself out in the edit, the effect worked just as planned. For the next scene, we switched the lighting setup to make it look like there was some sunlight hitting the room even though the sky was covered in clouds. Right now, outside here, we have the big light just shooting through the window. We have the curtain here to give us a little bit of texture. Also here, we have a small Godox to give me some front light. We also used the smoke machine and tried to loosen up the thick smoke, which left us with a thin layer of haze and with that, a much softer look in our image. The red dancing around him. <laughs> <laughs> but that's actually especially what you need for those kind of like fast-paced, high-intensity sports shoots. You need somebody who moves around with the camera, but still in a controlled way. Julian actually does it in a very, very good way. We are now here at the second location. If you just look down, you see it's like a very cool parking house. But today there are actually a ton of cars here. Like I've been shooting here a couple of times, no cars at all. Today everything is full. We just see what we can do. Here I also have like the shot list in order to have like a small overview of the things we need to capture. But yeah, let's just, let's just start. We decided to start off with some close tracking shots of me running along the different levels of the car park. For almost all of the running scenes, we stick to handheld shots as it just feels much more intense and hectic than for example gimbal shots. We then switch to a wider lens and Julian walked towards me and when the camera moves in the opposite direction of the subject, it generally makes the whole shot appear a lot more dynamic and fast. After only 5 minutes of shooting, I got approached by a security guard and thought that this would be it for this location. He turned out to be much nicer than expected and actually helped us block the main part of the car park in order for us to keep filming. We faced the camera to the top and went for some wide portrait shots of me walking through the car park, which turned out super epic. For the beginning shot of the commercial, I wanted to throw the viewer into the action as quickly as possible. So we captured another shot of me running towards the camera and stopping in exhaustion. As there was only light coming through the hole from above, we used a reflector in order to have some extra light on my face. So, I am happy to say that this video is sponsored by Artlist, which is my favorite music licensing platform out there. And guess where I found the song for my running commercial? That's right, Artlist. <laughs> They have an insanely large library of royalty-free music and sound effects that you can license for your own video projects with a simple subscription. And the thing that I like the most about them is that they push to improve their platform in order to make it as easy and intuitive as possible for us creators. They now have direct downloads, which makes everything a lot faster. And they also introduced a new feature called Similar Songs, which is extremely helpful when searching for the perfect track. So far, Artlist always had three different subscription tiers, depending on whether or not you want to use their additional sound effects library but now they actually included that sound effects library in all of their plans for free, which is a ton of additional value. If you're curious to see how I do my sound design while using Artlist, you can check out my full video about that here. So from now on, Artlist basically offers two different subscriptions for us creators. The first is the unlimited plan for $60.60 per month, which comes with a worldwide unlimited license that covers any project. And the second one is the all new personal plan, which is specifically made for creators who only need to license their music and sound effects for social media platforms like YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, and so on. This one now only costs $9.99 for an annual subscription or $14.99 for a monthly subscription. And this new personal plan actually makes Artlist the cheapest 
cheapest music licensing platform I know of, and I can't recommend you enough to check out their platform and give it a try. So if you want to buy your subscription, you can head to the first link in the description. And if you sign up through that, then you will get two additional months for free on top of your normal subscription. And obviously you will also support me and my channel. Thank you to Artlist for constantly pushing their platform and for being such an amazing sponsor of my channel. I'm not actually not often shooting with a red because I like the small setups, but big setups like these also have a lot of advantages. Like for example, the weight of it. With that, you can get really nice handheld shots, which is kind of difficult with the A7S III. So we can just look at, at the setup we have here. The special thing about it is, like you said before, it's like it's heavier and it balances really nice in your hand. So you can like do some handheld shots and you get like this organic handheld look. And yeah, feel. yeah. That is very balanced. You see, like I'm just holding it on my hand and it is not like front heavy or back heavy, but you can just like walk around like this and you have a very soft and handheld look. And with my A7S III, as it is so light, you get all of these small like micro jitters and shakes, which you can compensate with if you use like warp stabilizer and post. But with a setup like this, you can just do a ton more movements and you can walk a lot faster and you still have like this nice looking handheld look. At this point, we improvised a bit and looked for some interesting perspectives. In general, it is really helpful to have an exact shot list, but you should always leave room for improvised shots which you didn't think of before. Another important thing when shooting sports is to really show the intense emotions that the character feels. That's why I always sprayed water in my face to show the sweat and did small sprints <laughs> to get my heart pumping. We also captured some slow motion footage of my shoe, which unfortunately didn't make it into the edits. And then we got a visit from our good old friend. Okay, the security guy is coming again for the third time. This is crazy. I think he really wants us to shoot here. He actually just came back to tell us that he blocked the upper level of the car park so that we can film a few tracking shots from the car. What a legend. He's just guiding us to, <laughs> to shoot here. He's the nicest guy ever. Unfortunately, we only had one try to get the shot, but as it turned out, it was all we needed. As we were allowed to shoot on the parking deck, we went for some more car tracking shots. Again, the camera car drove in a different direction to the subject in order to create that hectic feeling. So exhausting. <laughs> this is just water. <laughs> All right, so for the next setup, we are in the English garden. We really want to portray what it's like to run for a long time and to reach that peak, which is called runner's high. So that's kind of like the point where you as a runner completely zone out and you're just kind of like in this meditative state. So that's why I wanted to show it with this slow motion sequence paired with some very high paced shots in between, where it's kind of like switching in between both worlds, what the runner sees and what the people outside see. And yeah, for this, we're actually just preparing the A7S III on the RS2. DJI actually sent this one out to me for free. Really like it so far. Back here, we have an Emmy, the scooter. We're gonna use that for some tracking shots in the English garden. Let's do it. These electro scooters actually became my go-to solution for filming in the parks because they're about the only type of vehicle with which you don't get busted. You kind of have this like back storage on the scooter itself. So you can kind of like lean over it. First up, we're gonna shoot with the gimbal itself. Also the, the sun just came out, so that is quite nice. I was expecting complete cloudy sky today. So we're not gonna waste any time and we're gonna get some nice slow-mo shots. Let's do it. When it comes to this scene, I wanted to visually separate it from the rest of the commercial. That's why we filmed all of the shots on a gimbal and in slow motion. The steady and slow movements take the viewer onto the same experience like the runner who is floating through the beautiful nature. With longer scenes like this one, it always makes sense to capture a large variety of shots in order to keep it interesting. That's why Julian also captured some 200 FPS panning shots with his telelens, which turned out super nice. Also, we launched a drone and Andy captured a couple of different shots from the sky. To show the outside perspective of someone else watching the runner, we did the exact opposite of what we did before, by now actually driving towards the subject. We filmed the same shot with the camera facing forwards and the camera facing backwards, and when edited next to each other, 
those shots appear very fast and aggressive. After that, we did another round on the scooter with the Reds where we captured some more fast-paced and shaky shots to separate both worlds. I'm gonna get some more water. Oh, there's definitely still some of the old stuff in there. I emptied this stuff this morning and put some water in. Doesn't smell like water. <laughs> I think we're gonna go to the next location and just get some more shots there because we only have like two and a half hours left until the sun is going down. And today it's even going to be darker sooner than that. It sometimes hurts, but I think it's very essential to always time the amount of time that you have on a specific location and really stick to it. Because if you don't do it, then you have to throw at one other location, which would be a pity. So we're just gonna go to the next one. We had a time issue because there was just way too much traffic to get to the last location and we still had to give back the um, smoke machine. But yeah, for this reason, we just decided to take advantage of the locations close to the rental, which are actually kind of cool. Like it's more business style, but there's some insane architecture. Yeah, we just tried to make the best of it because the light is just disappearing. And I hope that this is going to work out in the editing. I really hope. <laughs> From this point on, we improvised a lot and tried to check off the missing shots at the locations we could find close by. We filmed a few more preparation shots of me warming up and getting ready for the run. The location was definitely something different and gave the whole commercial a pretty interesting look. We then discovered another car park which was completely empty and where we could shoot some of the missing tracking shots which we couldn't get in the other car park. So we drove with the van parallel to the subject while Julian shot out of the side door. He captured some wide slow motion shots and also some hectic close-up shots switching between my feet and my upper body. For the outside tracking shots, we filmed the majority on the 85mm lens, which helped pull the viewer closer into the pain which the runner was going through. Acting became actually a lot easier here because I was actually exhausted from running up and down the road for more than five times. The cool thing about these side tracking shots is that the passing objects like cars, trees or pillars offer a lot of opportunities for natural transitions. So you can easily cut those clips next to each other and they will appear very very fluently in the edit. Alright, so this is one last spot or location that we discovered here. Yeah, I, I think it looks really cool because there's this industrial site and it kind of looks like I'm in the middle of nowhere. So here we're just going to shoot a couple of shots of me just being super exhausted, stopping, feeling like my body doesn't work anymore, really in pain. And therefore we also switch the shutter a little bit to a slower shutter so that we have a little bit more motion blur. Also like playing a little bit with the focus and that should really help to just get the people in the same state as I am in right now, like being super exhausted and I think it can work out really nicely. Let's just see what we can get. At our last location, we captured some more tracking shots out of the car, which I could then match with my tracking shots from the previous locations. This difference between day and night really helps compress time in the edit and shows the viewer how hard the character is working towards his goal. We filmed all of these shots with a 1 4 black promised filter, which made the lights in the background appear a bit softer. And just like that, we shot a whole running commercial in only one day. I'm actually super happy with how this commercial turned out and what a large variety of locations and emotions we were able to capture within only one day. Throughout the whole shoot, I learned a ton of new things and I hope that you enjoyed following along as well. So let me know in the comments if you like this style of video and if you want to see more of these in the future. Also, I wanted to let you know that I'm going to run a limited 25% discount on my signature LUTs and presets from Black Friday until Cyber Monday, which is the biggest discount I ever made. I added all of my photos with my signature presets and I color grade all of my videos with my signature LUTs. Also, this commercial was graded with my LUTs. The feedback of you guys has been absolutely insane. So if you don't have them yet and if you want to replicate the look of my photos and videos, now is the time to grab them. That's basically it for this one. I wish all of you guys a great day and I'm going to see you in the next one. Peace.